We in Hebrews chapter 11, verse four now. It says, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Wow. God testifying of his gifts and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Now, saints, there's a depth to this text. It says that by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Now, who was witnessing that Abel was righteous? God and the angels. And how did Abel showcase his righteousness? By sowing into God. M listen, did you know that Hebrews what? He it go Hebrews, James. Look, uh, we, uh, we hop over to Jude. Uh, Peter, first Peter, second Peter, uh, Jude, uh, going on first, John, uh, what, second John, first John, whatever. Nah. Look at all this. Peter. Look, what I'm really trying to say is, look, first John, second John, John, third John, Jude, all that. The Hebrews is couple books before the last book in the Bible. So, so this is the New Testament after the cross. Look what it says right here. It says, Abel, by faith, offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. Wait a minute. So his sowing account Hebrews 11.4 is telling you that it was the sowing that Abel did by which God declared him, you are righteous. Now, why are they talking about this in the New Testament if it's not relevant? Because it is. Sowing was not made in the Old Testament or the New Testament. Sowing was made in eternity. <laughs> See, God was sowing before Adam was ever made. The law of sowing and reaping wasn't made when God made Adam. That's what a lot of people think. Sowing is not no earthly law. It is a heavenly demonstration of God's greatness. Did you know that God, before he ever made a man, created a system. He created a demonstration mode that if you give something, that comes back to you. Not only in the form that you gave it, but in many other different forms. You say, Prophet, what do you mean by that? Let me show you something. The Bible say, honor the law with your substance. When you honor the law with your substance, that money is not just going to duplicate money. It's going to come back in the form of protection, peace, joy, pleasure, happiness, wisdom, understanding. Solomon's seed didn't come back with God just saying, I'll give you riches and give you wealth. God gave him a wise and discerning heart. That means that he could discern liars off of his sowing. Off of his sowing, he knew who didn't have the Holy Ghost inside of them. Off of his sowing, he knew who didn't love God, who didn't fear God, who didn't desire God. He knew what was witchcraft, what was wickedness, what was evil. God didn't make sowing when he made man. God made sowing before he made man. So when you see him saying, man, let me introduce you to sowing, 
that's not where sowing began. Before Adam was on the earth, angels were sowing into God. Why do you think that Lucy decided I'm not going to sow no more? That's what Lucy did. Lucy said, I ain't sowing no more into God, man. Uh-uh. No. That's what Lucy, that's what Lucy did. God created the angels for what? For him, to worship him, to sow into him. Before he ever made man, angels were sowing. Sowing didn't start when God made man in his image and likeness. Sowing was already going on hundreds of thousands of millions of years before God made man. And saints, let me just tell you something about the Lord. The Lord did not make man two years into his loneliness. Man came millions and billions of years later. There's a lot of lifestyles that God lived that you will never know about until you get into heaven. I could teach a lot of things to you, but uh, you know that. I just tell you here and there through the raw anointing. You know how we roll. I tell you, I give you here a little, there a little, enough for you to swallow. Because, I mean, this is big stuff. And see, we don't often think about that. When, when you in the earth realm and you operate in unbelief, like God ain't going to give you a harvest, like God ain't going to take care of you, like God ain't going to make a way for you. I mean, like, that's real small, like, that's real slow, too. Because remember, before before you up there thinking about your harvest, angels that received their harvest a long time ago. Angels been sowing way before man came on the scene and was receiving their harvest. Saints, let me shock you. When God said, let us make man in our image and likeness, that was God's harvest. God thought about his harvest and made it possible. Because God had mastered himself so strong, God said, let us duplicate ourselves in our same form. Saints, an ungodly man is carrying God's image. Not in his lifestyle, but in his appearance. How much more a godly man? Did you hear what I said? And a godly man is in the appearance of the image of God. Meaning God is a man. God ain't no woman. I don't care what nobody say. God ain't no woman. By the way, you're going to see a rise of false doctrine in the last days. Watch. Remember what I'm telling you. By the spirit, you're going to hear a doctrine come up that say that God is a woman. Watch. Watch. The Lord is not no woman. The Lord is a man. Remember even Moses said that the Lord is a man of war. It's a man, not no female. Now, Lucy going to rise up people to start saying that God is a woman. You know why? Because Lucy don't want you to find out the truth about Lucy. <laughs> Let's go to uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. Look what it says right here. By which he obtained. I got stopped. When I preach a long time, I start getting drunk, man, mentally. Like my mind, like start, I still, I, I really feel it. I really feel strongly intoxicated by Holy Spirit power. <sighs> Look at this here. Look at this. Now, look what it says right here. I start feeling drunk. I start feeling high. <sighs> and I'm going to tell you like this here, the Holy Spirit 
uh, he, he wants you to be high. Look at what Christie said. A young man I talked to one time said his college professor was saying that God was a woman, a female. See, 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 and, and Chris, so Christy, you, you know, you know, you know, I'm not lying here, right? You see that? It says, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Now, what was going on in Abel that made him offer up a more excellent sacrifice than Cain? What was really happening? What was going on in the soul of Abel that caused him to offer up a more greater sacrifice than uh, Cain? Abel understood that this was his whole purpose to give himself over to sowing. Cain did not identify that this was his purpose. Abel did. See, see, until you recognize this, the whole reason why I'm breathing, you can't lock in fully. If you understand, this is the only reason why God woke me up. Because he wants somebody that could sow into him. Everything that I'm doing is to empower me so I can sow into God. And God promised me he going to sow into me double what I sowed into him. To show me how his power works. How his love is able to reach my love. And double past my love. And double past my honor. And double Past my worship. And the whole purpose of why you're alive is to sow. And says, I want you to catch this. Because Cain didn't recognize that he was being woke up every day to sow, Cain was not thinking about sowing. Cain was not going to do what sowing took. In the back of Cain, mine, Cain was like, forget that, man. I do what I want, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, I, man, shoot, man, I, I ain't got to do that. I ain't got to do that to be blessed. I ain't got to do that. You know, God, you know, God love me anyway. You know, I ain't got to do that, man. And Cain was not engrafted into his purpose that this the whole reason why God woke him up to soul. Now watch this here. What was going on in Abel's mind that caused him to offer a way more excellent sacrifice to God? Now, let's look at this. The Bible said a way more excellent. That means that God was looking for exactly what Abel brought. But Cain, when, when God saw what he brought, God said, this boy here, he just won't miss it. You don't trust me. You don't believe in me. You don't love me. You don't care about me. I'm not anything to you. God was having a wrestling match with Cain. But when he got to Abel, he felt appreciated. Wow. Look at my son here. Look at my best friend here. And since God was having conversation with Abel, Abel Abel's soul was having a dialogue with the spirit of God. So if you take a note, write it down. Abel's sowing was so accurate and excellent because his soul was having a live dialogue with Jehovah God. The Lord was talking to Abel's soul and Abel was listening for what God was saying. Let's look at the inward parts of what was happening in Abel's heart. Abel understood that because sowing was birthed by God's idea, that all of his ideas should be wrapped up in the creativity of sowing. My God, I gotta say that again. I've never, man, listen. What was going on in Abel's heart, his soul, that made him offer the... What's that wisdom do I just gave? 
Abel had an understanding that sowing came from God's idea. So all of his ideas, Abel, Abel understood that sowing came from God's idea. So Abel said, I'm going to wrap my ideas up in the creativity of sowing into God. So watch, watch this here. He knew that the seed principle came from God's ideas. So he used his ideas to meditate sowing. Abel was wise. Cain was a fool. Abel had wisdom. Abel had the mind of the Lord. Wow. The Lord was talking inside of Abel's mind. And Abel was dwelling on everything that the Lord was saying. And I want you to catch this. That Abel's soul began to dream about the bigness of the harvest. Cain was not dreaming about the bigness of the harvest. Cain was stuck in his natural ability, which is really faith in Satan. Cain was saying, God is not no multiplier. God is not going to increase me more and more. But Abel was saying, if I sow this, it's coming back to me like this and way much more. If I give to God, he's going to give me more favor. If I sow into God, I'm going to unlock doors of blessing. If I sow into God, he's going to protect my health. If I sow into God, if there's an accident scheduled to me on the streets, he has sent angels to surround me, to keep me in all my ways. They shall lift me up, lest I dash my foot against a stone. Abel was full of the word concerning God's character. And Cain was not. Cain was ignorant of who he was sowing into. He was just doing it because it was a ritual. It was the right thing to do. But Abel was doing it because he had dwelt so long on the Lord's person that sowing mantles begin to be born out of his nature. It says, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Now think about this. That means that Abel was a better sower. When I leave my body, ain't nobody going to be able to say that they sold better than me. Nobody. When I leave my body, ain't nobody. Watch this here. Watch this here. I promise you this. When we go to that throne of God, ain't nobody going to be able to say that they sold better than me in 2022. Nobody. Nobody. I don't care if it's a preacher overseas in America. I don't care who it is. Nobody going to be able to say, I sold the best, 2022. Nobody. See, when, when you when you full of God's goodness and full of God's mercy and full of God's justice system and full of God's courtroom and his character, within your soul, your soul is prosperous. And when your soul is prosperous, it achieves a sowing grace, a sowing glory. That other people don't have. Because you could see that God is watching your seed. He's taking what you sow. And he's going to make your name great. God going to make your name great. Before we ever see the life of Abram. Before we know Abraham as the father of many nations. The Lord promised to make his name great. Right? But what is Abraham? A sower. So, so, while Abraham sowing. 
Galarose Elekira, Karanos. While he was sowing, God said, I'm going to make your name great. We don't see Abraham doing nothing spectacular right there. But God is saying, you are sower. I know who you are. I'm going to make your name great. People going to know you because you got my image. People going to know you because you acting like me. And I'm famous. See, <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I'm fa if I'm famous and you acting just like me, I'm going to pit my status on you. I'm going to pit my mindset on you. I'm going to pit my... My prestige, I'm going to pit my ability on you. I'm going to pit my lifestyle on you. You can't help but become famous and great because you're doing something that got fame and greatness and riches in it. I'm talking about God Almighty made the seed principle. And if you're operating in the seed principle, you got to come out with the same ingredients that that seed principle is carrying. It's carrying greatness. It's carrying wealth. It's carrying justice, riches, fame. It's carrying all of that. Don't let the devil bewitch you and rob you of your inheritance, my God. Don't let the devil rob you of what God said in his word. The sower will be made great. He going to make your name great. He going to make you likable to people. Your investors are going to love you and they're going to sow into you. There are people that God has anointed to bless you. There's people that God has anointed to lift you up. There's people that God has anointed to bless you in the city, bless you in the field, bless you coming in and bless you coming out. They've been anointed by God to give you help. They've been anointed by God to cause you to prosper. They've been anointed by God to endorse you. They've been anointed by God to act just like you, the same way you were sowing into God, holding nothing back. You were sowing into God with no fear. They're going to sow into you with no holding back. They're going to give unto you with no fear. The same way you was dreaming when you sowed and you was expecting God's goodness when they sow into you. They're going to be dreaming and expecting God's goodness. Somebody shout glory. Money coming to me now. Money coming to me now. <laughs> you, we poured a third time. Money coming to me now. Money cometh is God's identity. Money cometh is the image of God, the personality of God, the character of God. He want to blow your mind. He want you to be able to shine in front of people that thought that you was going to go under. He want you to be wearing nice stuff in front of people that thought that they was going to kill your destiny. He wants you to be blessed and living it up in the face of people that thought you was going to be suffering. No, you're not going to die. You shall live and not die to declare the glory of the Lord. You shall take hold of everything that God has for you. The blessing of Abraham is upon you. The blessing the blessing of the Lord is overtaking you. You shall live in the land flowing with milk and honey. 